6.30 and I got up this morning and made myself my usual breakfast, of course, and then I took the girls on a nice mile and a half walk. Today is the first day. Let it be known, I'm wearing shorts. I'm so excited about this. Haven't worn shorts since ooh, September of last year and it is almost May. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. These are a newer Fleo shorts and this top is from Lulu. From those of you that always ask about these little uh, waffle shirts, they are my favorite workout tank tops. And so today I'm going to do a workout in the garage. I might even drag the rower outside because the sun is shining. It's gonna rain though later today so I kinda wanna I kind of want to take advantage of the lovely weather while I can, and then just kind of get some stuff done around the house today. Just do a little hang out with me, day in the life vlog style. I haven't done one of those in a little bit. So just wanted to welcome you to the video, and I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. So let's go get our shoes on and go out in the garage and get some squatting in. Let it go. This is such an accurate depiction of how my training has been going lately. I accidentally put a 10 pound plate in between the 45 and the 35, which is not supposed to be a 35, it's supposed to be a 25. So not only is it not 185, but it's uneven on the one side, and then it's actually like 205. So I need to go get different ones. Don't let go. Chasing a bitch. What do you do? Don't let go. Chasing a bitch. What do you do? gotta have one of these chairs and people don't pull their uh, lawn chairs out to the backyard here like you do in Florida that was a big thing here we do them in their driveway so I have my workout chair ready for action pop a squat here I got one more set but I need to rest because that was hard I'm still doing some weightlifting and combining that with bodybuilding CrossFit style as I told you guys before a couple of videos ago and so Today's training is combining my back squats with some push press. So because I did snatches yesterday and a couple of upper body, um, it was mostly like back pulling stuff. Today I'm going to be doing pushing. So push press and then a couple of shoulder accessories. I think I've got like uh, seated side dumbbell lateral raises and seated front raises. If you are looking to add accessory training into your current schedule, what I would recommend is basing it off of the compound movement that is your primary movement of that day. If you're doing like a regular program that's specializing in like upper body days, lower body days, so on and so forth, um, a strict press, a push press, a split jerk, anything like that would be considered the compound movement. So that's obviously upper body push. And so then you're gonna wanna base your accessory training off of that movement particularly. So I would suggest doing things that are like delt, activated, rear delt, maybe even some chest if you want. And then I personally like to do anything bicep and tricep related on its own just because I feel like I really need to focus for that. <laughs> I just don't like bodybuilding in general, but I do it for the gains, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyways, I gotta finish this and then we get the Christmas workout. Oh, yeah, he sets my body in motion. He just he knows how to turn things up. And he knows what gets me going. Yeah, like a little text saying, hey, what's up? They look at me, I'm in a bad situation. Look at him, he's got a bad reputation. They be looking at us, thinking we are too much. Look at me, I'm in a bad situation. Look at him, he's got a bad reputation. They be looking at us.
Yeah, he sets my body in motion He just, he knows how to turn things up And he knows what gets me going Yeah, like, a little text saying, hey, what's up? They look at me, I'm in a bad situation Look at him, he's got a bad reputation They be looking at us Thinking we are too much Look at me, I'm in a bad situation look <laughs> So I recently have been switching my shake up with the Oreo one, but instead of using the ISO drive, the vanilla milkshake, I've been using the Profusion cookies and cream. I just love how they don't overdo their flavors. Like I cannot stand the overly sweet, chemical, like nasty aftertaste protein. And this one, it's got an added blend of MCT oil and it's a little bit higher carb. So if you're somebody that's looking for like a meal replacement with like a protein shake, I would highly recommend the Profusion 7. But this blended with the Oreo cookies is just so stinking good. Mm. But on the topic of nutrition, while I was training, I was thinking about some stuff and I actually was in between my sets writing down some notes on my phone because I feel like this is something that we're all kind of dealing with to an extent, especially those of you who are not used to working from home and you know, your, your entire environment changes, right? Like your productivity in your environment is so used to one way and then you have to switch it up and adapt to all these different things while you're trying to find a routine and a schedule. And one thing that I've been noticing a lot lately is a ton of my clients and even myself, honestly, like, I've been noticing that so many people are saying that they're struggling with motivation, whether that be motivation to hit their macros or track their food, eat healthy, work out, whatever. These things, in my opinion, are, you know, things that are good for you, both mentally and physically. And I think the vicious cycle starts when you don't feel like doing something because you don't have any motivation and then you don't do it. So then you feel worse and then you give up and then the cycle starts again, you know? One of the things that I think has really helped me personally and I just wanted to share it with you guys is understanding that being productive doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing a bajillion random things. Cause in all honesty, I feel like that can sometimes make you feel more overwhelmed. So I think the biggest factor that contributes to being productive is being efficient. So how I look at this is how can I get the most out of my time, whether that's doing something for work or doing a workout or whatever it may be, I'm always looking to do things in the most effective way. And this just makes me feel personally more productive with what I choose to do. And I like to write things down in to-do lists. I was talking about this on my Instagram not too long ago. I am a huge to-do list person. But like, I just love sitting down, thinking about a task I need to do, getting it done and crossing it off. And I feel like that just kind of motivates me to do other things. Kind of similar to like when you set a specific task, like for example, over the weekend, I really wanted to clean out that hall closet and I've been putting it off and putting it off. So I finally cleaned it out and the motivation that I got from doing that actually inspired me to go and clean out other things that I have been putting off in my house for quite some time. So sometimes I think that just as much as the vicious cycle works in the negative way, it also really works in the positive way as well. And I know that the hardest part is always just getting yourself started, like taking that first step is always the worst. But it's just like what I said with change, you know, you remember the first day of school, like if you went to a new school or something, it was always super overwhelming and super scary, but you just went, you showed up, you did it. And then over time you got used to it. And as we are becoming used to this new normal here in Iowa, we were extended until May 15th. So we still have three more weeks of this isolation. But I know for a lot of you, you've been extended May and well into June. So this can be a way to look at it as, okay, I'm gonna accept this new reality. I'm gonna try to write down things that I wanna get done, schedule out my day to being productive, but also being efficient. And figuring out what works for you is not gonna happen overnight. Just like with fitness and nutrition, like in my opinion, I think a lot of this stuff correlates because you're never just going to like start a new nutrition or fitness journey and then just like, have a great first day and accomplish everything. Anything that you do in life, whether it be a skill or a task, if you have to practice it, you have to take the initial step and then continue to put that effort in to practice it and get better at it. And then that will kind of help you feel like you want to do that and apply that to other things in your life. So that hall closet that I cleaned out, yes, I accomplished the hall closet task, but then I also went ahead and cleaned out my old drawers and got rid of clothes and it just kind of started a domino effect. And I think that's kind of the same thing for fitness and nutrition. So don't overwhelm yourself. Like, you know, don't go from sitting on the couch 
13 hours a day to going and trying to run for a half marathon because I think that's also where some people make a mistake is they try to go from zero to 100 too fast and they overwhelm themselves and get frustrated and give up. Let's say we'll just we'll just apply it to fitness, right? So the double unders that I just did in that workout, a lot of times people will say like, oh, I suck at double unders. Well, this is kind of a skill. It's not necessarily like a life skill, but it's just a skill that if you can practice the discipline to practice said skill, I really think that doing that will give you, excuse me, will give you your own motivation to continue to apply that to other things that are not necessarily fitness. And then like I said, it's kind of full circle and comes back. If I get in a really big funk, especially with training, I just try to take small steps. Like, okay, weightlifting, real, I've gone through this with weightlifting so many times pisses me off, right? And then I go to the extreme, or I have in the past, of being like, I'm giving up weightlifting, I'm never weightlifting again. And instead, I think it's a better idea to refocus that energy on a smaller task. So like for me, when I did that, or when I broke my hand, I was like, okay, instead of just giving up working out altogether, I'm going to take this energy and focus it on squatting. And that was a really simple thing. It wasn't anything crazy. And I ended up doing that squat program, getting super strong in my squat, and it took my mind off of the things that I said I couldn't do. So whether this is for anything, I mean, you could literally apply this logic to fitness, nutrition, relationships, whatever. You do have to practice things. You can't just expect to be great at something if you've never tried it before. You can't just rely on motivation to get things done. And even if there was not a global pandemic at this point, I feel like people rely too heavily on that like burst of motivation to go to the gym or eat healthy and that's not always gonna be there. The discipline and the habits and the routines are gonna, going to carry you way, way, way farther than motivation ever will. And I can tell you from experience, I have been way more unmotivated than I have been motivated in life, but also like in this weird time that I think we're all kind of bonding over because I've seen so many people just say that they're so unmotivated, in a funk, not feeling it, this, that, and the other. And so if you just rely on your motivation, you're not going to get anything done. I can definitely say that if you take that small step just to get that one thing done, you will be so happy that you did it and hopefully it will then motivate you to get other things done. That is my little TED talk. I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> I'm going to finish this protein shake. I need to put self tanner on today. That's another thing too. Get ready. Get yourself ready for the day. Um, but my new self tanner did not come in the mail yet. I ordered one to try a different one because I'm doing like a review on self tanner. So I might just end up having to use the Bondi Sands one. I got check-ins to do. I got protein shakes to drink. <laughs> so I'm going to do this and then I will catch up with you guys in a little bit when I'm going to uh, bronze myself. <laughs> You can literally put these little slots into any of the uh, organizers. So like you can have this shelf be super high if you want it or this one be really high. Oh my gosh, it is storming out there. It was so nice out this morning, look at this. Ew, this looks like tornado weather. Gross, perfect time to reorganize and clean things. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and here is the finished product. I absolutely love this spinning thing. I think it's so helpful and I put most of the stuff that I use like on a daily basis here or just stuff that was too big to fit in these smaller containers. And everything else I kind of just separated by like glosses, lipsticks, single shadows or single whatevers. Then those are extra eyeshadow palettes that I don't really use a ton. These are the most frequently used shadow palettes, lashes, like contour and face palettes, and then down there at the bottom is the hair stuff. So super excited about how this came out. I'm really loving the organization inspiration that I've been getting lately. I also did this closet, which annoys me, it doesn't have a light, but I organized this closet. You can see it on my TikTok if you want. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What you doing? Making a little pre-workout. You work yeah. out? I'm just vlogging. Vlogging? Yeah. Why do you sound so sad? <laughs> so I got nothing to vlog about. <laughs> just my TikTok video. <laughs> I'm a TikTok queen now. What are you gonna do while I work out? I don't know. 
Organize something else probably. <laughs> Find something else to clean. Are you girls cut a win? Yeah. I don't even think you can really see on camera as much as it's raining out there, but I was unable to go for a uh, late afternoon or evening walk because it's pouring. So I actually just cleaned my closet <laughs> and I just nailed some little nails to the wall to hang those hats. And then I organized my legging drawer, which is very satisfying to me. Kind of wanted to do them like color coordinated, but then I thought that would be too much. So anyways, now I'm going to wash off this, ooh, cheeses. This uh, self tan, I really love this one. I don't know if you can tell, this is bruises from uh, push press, ignore that, but like it kind of got Watch. a little, yeah. Yeah, I'm watching. Right? You noticed, did you notice that? No, no I heard you say it. I don't know, we'll see when I wash it off, but this was the Bondi Sands Ultra Dark instead of the liquid glow that I used before. So, I don't know, we'll see, I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm still waiting on the U tan one and then the Isle of Paradise drops before I give my full review on like the different ones I've tried so far. So I'm gonna go wash this off. We're gonna hang out on the couch and watch some criminal minds. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little day in the life vlog. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click subscribe so you never miss Monday with manners. Okay, hope you guys are staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video.